You shocked that you've gotten this far without anybody asking you about all the rumors this week? I'm just. I'm just saying I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about it, so I might as well. Um, I mean, it's nonstop. I mean, it's it's every day. Hold up, hold up, hold up, Gary. I'm not gonna be the next head coach at LSU. Can I ask you next question? Well, Lincoln Riley was right. He's not going to LSU. (laughs) Instead, headed to the West Coast to take over the USC Trojans. An absolute stunner on an NFL Sunday saw Southern California land one of the biggest head coaches in the game. In a statement, Riley said, quote, I'm truly excited to come to USC and join the Trojan family. As his new head football coach, USC has an unparalleled football tradition with tremendous resources and facilities. The administration has made a deep commitment to winning. I look forward to honoring that successful tradition and building on it. Time to bring in senior college football writer Dennis Dodd. And Dennis, USC landing the superstar coach in Lincoln Riley. There was a short list of candidates. Riley really wasn't one of them. How'd this all happen? Well, we don't know that. You know, I, I think the bombshell that happened Sunday, you saw the question that was asked. The question that should have been asked is a follow-up by somebody, are you returning to Oklahoma? Because it was all focused on LSU. And I do believe he was called by LSU, but you saw by his answer that, to me, he didn't want to go to LSU. And I don't know when USC called. I suspect it was late in the process, almost like Mike Bone, the AD, picking up the phone. I might as well give it a shot. Hey, guess what? Lincoln Riley's interested. And that's what happened here. It was easier to go to USC. I don't know what the word is easier. It was better to go to USC where you can recruit California players and beat one team. Right now, that's Oregon. And and win a championship and try to get to the playoff. Then to have to go against Texas and A&M and all those other teams and try to win in the SEC. That was the first thing that popped into my mind on July 21st when Oklahoma and Texas, you know, the word leaked that they were going to the SEC. Okay, that's great. Texas isn't going to win six straight Big 12 conference titles in the SEC. Uh, Oklahoma's not. Texas is not going to get well, particularly in football, going to the SEC. And I think that's what you see reflected in Lincoln Riley going to the West Coast, where, frankly, it's going to be easier to win. To your point, Dennis, he kind of keeps that two-horse race to the path to the CFP from the Big 12 with Oklahoma and Texas to the Pac-12 with now USC and Oregon. What is USC getting here? You mentioned the upside for them to get back to a place where their fan base and their expectations are always sky high. Well, first of all, look, Oklahoma shouldn't feel a sense of betrayal. Lincoln Riley gave them five good years. Yes, Joe Castiglione, the AD, elevated him in June of 17, handpicked to replace Bob Stoops, but he gave him five years. He won a Big 12 title in all five of those years. He went to three playoffs. Now he goes to USC. What are they getting? A proven head coach who can win, who plays fast, who's going to get back to the mentality that USC wants. Now, they were playing an air raid offense, but they weren't particularly hard on either side of the ball. I suspect he'll hire a big name defensive coordinator, and that will be that. But they get a proven coach who knows what he's doing, who can recruit, and is young enough, and that's another part of this, Tommy, who's young enough to stay there for a long, long time. People are going to say, well, he wasn't loyal. People his age, maybe a little younger, kids in their 20s, it's a gig economy. And I know this is a small example, but they go from job to job these days, sometimes without insurance, but they're going for the next best thing. That's America. And that's what he's done here. And I suspect when we see this contract announced, it'll be 10 years. uh, It'll start at 100 million, something like that. But after what we've seen with Mel Tucker and James Franklin and Jimbo Fisher are are almost kind of immune to that. That's the market these days. It's interesting. Maybe there's just more shock within the Sooner community because this does not happen to them. They don't lose head coaches in the manner that they had with Lincoln Riley over the weekend. But now I would assume, Dennis, that some of the shortlist candidates that were in line for the USC job would be into the Oklahoma job as well. What do you think about what Oklahoma now has in front of them trying to fill the big need left vacated by Lincoln Riley? Yeah, you got to call Luke Fickle. Uh, you've got to call Matt Campbell. I'm really intrigued by Brent Venables, who was Bob Stoops' first co-defensive coordinator and then became coordinator at Oklahoma from 1998 to 2011. This might be the job for him, especially, you know, Clemson going 9-3. and three. They're not falling off the edge of the earth, but he's more than done 
is duty there. Um, does he want to get back to his, where his roots are at K-State with Bob Stoops, at Oklahoma, and try to re, you know keep this thing going? I'm not going to say revive, but I would watch that. I would watch those three, and I would watch Josh Heupel at Tennessee. You know, you've got to give him a call. There's complications there, though. Not only are you, you know, pulling a Lane Kiffin part two, leaving after a year, Josh Heupel was unceremoniously fired at Oklahoma in December of 2014 and replaced as offensive coordinator by Lincoln Riley. And Bob Stoops is the interim coach right now who fired Josh Heupel. What influence will that have? That being said, Josh Heupel is roundly loved at Oklahoma. He was the quarterback for the last national championship team at Oklahoma in 2000. And his trajectory is rising, you know, not not as accomplished as Lincoln Riley, but on a similar track right now. We got to go, Dennis. But before I do, very quickly, what's the biggest question you have with Lincoln Riley going to SC? Uh, the question is, can he be the next Pete Carroll? Because that's what they're banking on. Uh, for years before Pete Carroll, uh, they, they didn't win. And for years after, they didn't win at a level four that Pete Carroll had established. Can he get that program back? to the point it's competing for championships. It'll compete for the Pac-12. Can it be in the playoff? All right, Dennis Don with a breakdown there. Again, the bombshell on Sunday. We're breaking it down on Monday. The guys at the Cover 3 podcast have also been talking about this with an emergency pod. Also, Billy Napier to Florida. This has been discussed. I will let you know there is a introductory press conference tentatively scheduled today out of the West Coast for Lincoln Riley, 3 p.m. Pacific. And in the meantime, Dante Williams will remain the interim head coach for the final week of the season, including their game against Cal. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.